so you want to unlock the guardian items but don't know how. With this video, I'll take you through each step on how to unlock each module, weapon, and fighter, all condensed into an easy to follow guide. Before we get started, however, I'd like to give you a quick 30 second background on who the guardians were. The guardians were a non-human race that occupied a large area of space several million years ago. At its height, the guardian civilization was technologically superior to human civilization of the 33rd century, and it occupied an area of a roughly equivalent size. The Guardians endured as a spacefaring civilization for at least 8,000 years before being destabilized by a lengthy civil war. The surviving Guardians were then destroyed by artificially intelligent machines of their own creation. The galaxy contains the ruins of dozens of Guardian settlements, and data logs recovered from these sites have allowed humanity to compile a remarkably detailed picture of Guardian society. I'll be treating this as if it's your first time unlocking this tech, but those of you already familiar with the process can still benefit. You'll want these guardian items if you want a mid-range item between stock and engineered items without the engineering, if you're fighting Thargoids, or just want to go further. If you want to skip the summary of what's available, check the description for the timestamp. So what's available? The page you're looking at now is from Inara, link below, and shows the various guardian modules, fighters, and weapons available for unlock at the time of this recording. Each module unlock provides you with all available size classes as well. Each module does require power, so keep that in mind when purchasing or engineering your power plant. The FSD Booster is an optional internal module that provides a flat increase to a ship's overall jump range up to 10.5 light years. The hull reinforcement increases hull integrity with thermal and caustic resistances. The power distributor gives you increased recharge rates, additional heat generation, and a lower overall capacity. The cool thing is that it bumps up your power plant's output by 4%. The module reinforcement reduces damage to your ship's modules and prevents that annoying HUD scrambling and module reboots from the Thargoid lightning attacks. The power plant gives you more power, generates more heat, and has more mass. These are not engineerable. The shield reinforcement package simply increases your shield strength by a flat megajoule amount. These fighters are all fairly similar in stats with three different weapons. The plasma autocannon, the shard launcher, and my favorite, the gauss cannon. There are essentially three weapon types here, but with varying sizes and a choice between turreted or fixed. You need different materials and commodities for each one. You've got the Gauss Cannon, the Plasma Charger, and the Shard Cannon. Let's start with unlocking the modules and weapons. It's the same process for both, just different materials. I'll be focusing on the FSD booster because honestly everyone should have one of these. Let's say you don't have a lot of cash or engineers unlocked. Your best bet is to grab the Diamondback Explorer. It's got the highest base jump range, which you're going to want when you find out how far you need to go. We're going to derate all of our modules, except the A-rated FSD, grab a large fuel scoop, an SRV or two, and enough cargo racks to hold 12 tons. You'll most likely want to grab a point defense and ensure it's on the top of the ship since we'll have Guardian Sentinels firing missiles at us. Depending on what you're looking to unlock, modules or weapons, there are two places that I prefer since everything for them is on one body. For the modules, you'll want SINUF NLN C234 Body B3. For the weapons, you'll want SINUF EUQ C2110 Body A3. Once you arrive in system and head towards the body, the Guardian structure you're heading to should pop up on your nav panel within 1000 light seconds. The locations we're concerned with are here. These are the pylons that we need to charge up with our SRV the American way, by shooting at them. We're going to want to park close to the structure so that if a sentinel fires missiles at us, our point defense from our ship can shoot them before we get hit. Once out, head to the main part of the structure. You can't miss it. I've had issues where if I start looking for the pylons, they won't come out unless I get close to this main structure. There's two steps here, gathering our materials and activating the main structure. I like to grab as many materials as I can before activating the main structure. If you're looking for any panels that are lit up, you can shoot these and grab whatever's in there. As you're doing this, sentinels are going to be randomly popping up and firing at you. I like to get into turret mode, put 4 pips to weapons, then 4 to systems while being shot at, and 4 to systems, and then 4 to weapons when not. You can usually take them out quickly. This method even allows you to take on 2 at a time. When you've found all you can, it's time to activate the pylons. Once you find one, get on the correct side and fire your weapons at it to charge it up. You'll need to do this with all 6 that were shown before. Once all six are charged, find a guardian relic that comes out of the ground on a tower. 
Grab this before or after you charge the pylon. It doesn't really matter. Bring the guardian relic to the main part of the structure and jettison it. It's going to insert itself automatically into the hole you may have seen in the ground. An orb will now come out of the main structure. As soon as that opens, scan it with your SRV. You'll receive one guardian module blueprint segment. You need one for each module you want to unlock. As soon as you scan this, sentinels will come out. Either fight them or head back to the safety of your ship. At this point, I check through your materials to ensure that you have the amount you need, which is listed on the Inara page we were viewing earlier, and which is linked below. If you don't, you can go to the main menu and log back in, or go to Super Cruise and come back. You may have noticed that for some of the modules, it requires a type of obelisk data. These are short, triangular prisms scattered about the Guardian structure and ruins. Scan any that show up as blue. Once you scan all the prisms at the structure, you're going to want to head over to the Guardian Ruins on the same body and scan the obelisks there. Depending on which module you want to unlock, you'll be looking for Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Epsilon data. Basically scan every obelisk you see and pray to Braben that you get what you want. If you don't, visit the other ruins. By the end, you should have all the data you need. Depending on which modules or weapons you're unlocking, you may need the last piece of the puzzle, Modities. For the FSD booster we're unlocking, we need 8 HN shock mounts. After a quick search using the same site linked below, I can find the station nearest to me that sells these. After picking those up, the closest Guardian tech broker to me is in Latuba. You can use Inara to search the closest tech broker to you depending on where you are. The tech broker will be in the contacts part of the station and will have the item or items you can unlock highlighted. If you want the Guardian weapons, you'll follow the same process but at the other location listed earlier. Sign UF EUQ C2110 Body A3. Alright, the fighters are a little bit different. Instead of dropping a guardian relic at the structure like we did for the modules and weapons, you'd need an ancient key. You'll need thermal weapons like a laser or plasma accelerator for this as well. To get one of those, we need to go to Sign UF KUF B44 4 and activate a guardian beacon. Once in the system, you should see the guardian beacon show in your nav panel. After dropping in on the signal, we need to activate the three orbs using the laser weapon we brought with us. Once it's charged, an orb should come out from the structure. Once it opens, scan it. This will give you the location you need to go to next and finish the activation sequence to obtain your ancient key. The structure will change once again, but this time a bright ancient key will come out of the structure opposite the orb. Scoop this up and check your messages. It should give you the location we're heading to next. Sign UF EUQ C2115. Once there, follow the same process we did for the modules, but instead of dropping the ancient relic that we don't need, you'll need to jettison the ancient key. Doing this will bring out the orb that you'll need to scan to get the Guardian Vessel Blueprint segment needed for the fighters. You need one for each of the three fighters, along with one ancient key for each as well. Just when you think we're done, we're not! You'll need pattern data from the obelisks like we did earlier for some of the modules. Make sure to cross-reference your materials and data with what's listed on Inara. If you don't have enough, redo the process after relog or supercruise out and back. If you need more data, check the other obelisks at the nearby Guardian Ruins. Yes, this process is not easy, but once you unlock one item, the rest is just a matter of collecting the required materials and commodities. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below, message me on Discord, or hang out in my Twitch channel. All the info is below. See you soon!